Still selling fish. Food is still being sold. Okay, we can still get supplies, that's good. Are we crazy to travel in 2020? I mean, it was our plan. We are currently driving around the world and we were intending to spend the entire year traveling, but obviously the situation in the last couple of weeks has just blown up and um, it may not be possible for us to travel, but right now we are in Northern Africa. We are stuck in Morocco and there is no way for us to leave. So um, we asked you guys to send us a bunch of questions and you have, but overwhelmingly and not surprisingly, the most common question is, what the heck are you gonna do about coronavirus and how is that affecting you? And so we are gonna tackle that one first because we think that that is the most important thing to, um, to discuss, first of all. The situation here is very different um, compared to where you guys are, but I'm sure there's a lot of similarities. Um, so we will talk about what's happening with coronavirus in Northern Africa and particularly in Morocco. Um, and we will get to your other questions that you kindly sent us in a separate video, which we'll link at the end of this one. Um, situational awareness, guys, we're just heading down into Tagazut, which is a very touristic um, surf town on the coast of Morocco. Uh, this is probably one of the epicenters. A lot of the locals here are currently really scared of all, all tourists, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, we're going to take you on a little drive uh, across the coast. It should be pretty tranquil, um, just so you can have something to look at whilst we talk through this issue, because we like to take you on adventures, even when there's coronavirus everywhere. Yeah. Before we get into this Q&A, though, we just wanted to first um, say that we hope you all looking after yourselves and that everyone is well and we understand that everywhere in the world there is chaos and um, fear and things are going on and everyone's kind of like worried and this video is just talking about what we're experiencing at the moment um, in Morocco so um, yeah just what we're experiencing at the moment how this is affecting um, our plans Please understand that um, there's much more important things happening than whether yeah. people can travel in, in 2020, okay? Like, that is a, a small thing. People are dying all over the place, um, and many more people will before this is over, and that should really be the most important thing that's, on this, that's being discussed. But as this is affecting us, and there's a lot of people that have travel and adventure plans in 2020, um, we thought we'd just talk about that in this video. Um, do you want to put your window up? It's quite yeah, dark. I will. Um, so, firstly, we'll get on to like what our, pre what our plans were before all this took off. Um, we were planning on touring around Africa and going back up to Spain for summer and do the whole Europe trip in summer. Yeah, specifically heading to Italy. So as soon as we saw that it's starting to really kick off in Italy, obviously you pro guys probably know it's really badly hit with the coronavirus. We, we straight away we were like, our plans are out the window. We, we're not going to be able to go to Italy. We'll have to go somewhere else in Europe. And since then... Yeah, since we, we've been, like, everything's been changing. Every hour we've been getting new information that's been changing our plans. And before we had a chance to figure out what we were doing, um, our options cut short very quickly and um, we weren't able to cross the border with our van. Yeah, they closed, um, the, they shut the ferry off right in the north of Africa, which is the only way out of Africa with yes. a vehicle. And the only option to get out now is hopefully try to get some flights um, back to the UK, back to Australia, leave the van here, and then Alaska is going to be left here. So that's not really an option for us at the moment. Alaska is our dog, for those of you that don't know, who's very yes. patiently sitting down here um, because the back is full of surfboards right now. Sorry, girl. So, yeah, we can't really fly out because of um, Alaska and we'd have to leave the car here. Um, but we're trying to like, work out whether that's going to be ridiculous because um, things have been changing pretty quickly here in Morocco. Uh, where, what are we on to you talking about next? Um, the current situation here in, in Africa is obviously the borders are closing. Um, nobody can get flights in or out. The, the, the airport at the moment is absolute pandemonium. Pandemonium. Oh, I can't even say that word. Can you say it for me, please? Chaotic. Thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's lots of tourists trapped up there, like lots of flights being cancelled. Um, and 
basically we don't want to get involved in all of that. Um, however, we also wonder whether it's um, reckless of us to stay in Northern Africa because this is a developing country, Morocco. Um, hygiene is slightly different. The infrastructure is, is definitely different to what we used to back home and there is a massive language barrier. So we're really worried that um, we're gonna get caught in a situation where we can't really communicate with people um, and that we might regret maybe being in Morocco. Although I don't think we have a choice. No, uh, yeah. There are concerns that, um, well already we're hearing stories that um, Westerners are getting um, treated really badly from like the locals are getting spat at and kind of like being yelled at to stay away and like not treated very nicely so we don't know how it's all going to go down the next few weeks like we said it changes so um so much and it hasn't really hit as hard here as it has in europe but well, that doesn't this mean is that the it won't. calm before the storm right yeah it's, so it really hasn't kicked off here yet um although like you know Every, all the public spaces are closed and everything, the borders are closed and that car's going to crash into me and no, we're good. Um, yeah, all right. Okay, apparently I did something wrong. The Morocco, the roundabouts uh, work a little bit differently. I was already on the roundabout, but I had to give way to him joining the roundabout. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's the situation in Africa at the moment, changing all the time. Um, so our... about, about this, um, the locals treating um, foreigners differently. Part of that is because um, like there was no coronavirus here and no. the, all, all of the cases that came in were tourists visiting the country and so there is this kind of like segregation between um, like the tourists, the foreigners and the locals um, and it may be that um, people are a little bit worried about like the tourists so we're expecting to be treated differently. Yeah. So we have a couple of options, right? Yeah. Well, we're, what we're basically going to do is kind of isolate ourselves from everybody and try to just um, stock up on, on food and stuff for the next week and just kind of lay low. Um, we have been hearing stories also of people being kicked out of like Airbnbs and rentals and hotels as well. And foreigners. They're yeah, foreigners. So uh, we don't want to get to that position. Like we do have with this van, but we also don't want to be on the, we don't know how it's going to be on the streets or in public space. Um, we should probably explain that we have an Airbnb. Um, Leah's sister's recently been visiting. So we've, we've had, we have an apartment that we can use. Yeah. Um, but that, that, that um, rental agreement is coming to an end so we are going to be back in the van so one option is to just like we have the opportunity to live off grid that's why we built this van is so that we can go around the world and live off grid and so we could just disappear into the hills but we are tied to um, society because we need food um, and refill water so we're always and, going to have to keep gasoline. going into the towns to you know stock up which obviously we don't want to we want to keep that to a minimum and also we don't want to be if for some reason they say that nobody should be out we want to get the tourists off the road and out of the spaces they could easily just say guys you know come with us we're putting you in quarantine i think that's a very real situation because the the police here they don't particularly like people traveling independently in camper vans we've had it a number of times in our time in morocco where they've come up and they've taken our details like our passport information um and they just want to keep us safe to know where we are and yeah, but um, I think it would be like if they was if there was a travel restriction, um, they would come to all of the off-grid places like the beach spots, and they would herd all of the tourists together and put them into one location. And we really don't want to be quarantines like that. So I don't think living off-grid in the van is necessarily the best option right now. And look, it could be fine, it's just you don't know, you're just trying to think of the worst case scenario and whether you want to put, go through that or not and just trying to keep it as simple as possible and just looking after ourselves and... We had a question from, um, who was that question from? Um, about... Nice beach, nobody on it. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to die anywhere, Morocco is pretty uh, a good place for the end of the world to come, isn't it? Yeah. Possibly a little over dramatic. So we do have a Patreon question from Julie Mack. She asks, um, how long were you guys hanging out with Eamon and Beck? So Eamon and Beck are also here. Yeah, I don't know if you guys follow them. Some of them, some of you, we've got like, some of you just subscribe from our ch from their channel. So welcome to Compu Life. 
Um, if you don't know who Amy and Beck is, uh, you should go check them out. We'll link one of their videos below. Yes. Um, so they're in Africa also, and we were very lucky to bump into them during this time so we can all kind of like try to get through this together and kind of bounce ideas off each other and you know support each other through this. Um, their plan at the moment is to stay with their van as well. They didn't want to leave their, their camper van. However, the, Can the Canadian government is calling back all Canadians yeah. um, and trying to repatriate all of um, the citizens. So they are kind of like debating whether it, it's a good idea for them to go back um, whether it's irresponsible of them to stay or what the best option is for them. Like everything is changing by the hour, as we said. And so they are still in town. Um, we are still kind of hanging out together um, every day and um, just supporting each other as we, as we work through these, um, like trying to come to the best decisions. Yeah. I think one of the, the issues with being repatriated from like a, a foreign country is um, our, we've probably already been exposed to coronavirus. Um, I don't really want to take that home personally to my family, and I know Eamon and Beck feel the same way. That's a concern of all of us that are overseas at the moment. And so we feel some, like, especially depending on the circumstances for who you've got at home and how old those people are, um, you know, like a lot of us are going back to live with our families, so we don't want to make them sick. Because it's not so bad for people with strong immune systems, mm -hmm. but it could be a lot worse for the people we love. Yes. Yeah, so they're currently making that decision, but they're here still just trying and waiting, I guess, to uh, see what happens. Yeah. Um, Julie, I know that you also asked uh, how we manage our money when we're crossing international borders and everything like that. Yes. The short answer is we have multiple cards like uh, Monzo, Revolut and Starling Bank, all of which um, give us uh, free cash withdrawals abroad and they're really good for um, doing inter kind of conversion stuff. I'll make a video about that, I put it on my to-do list. Thank you for the suggestion, thank you for being a patron and supporting our content. We appreciate you, Julie. Um, but yeah, just to answer that. What else is there? Okay, I've um, got a YouTube question from Rob Edgar. He said, I'm binge watching, awesome. Glad you're enjoying it. And he said, I was wondering what you do if you get really sick. Do you have health insurance or do you, do you just cross, cross your fingers and hope that everything will be okay? Yeah. Well, <laughs> with, in this situation, for example, like health insurance, travel insurance don't really help in, the, in these kind of situations. Yeah, we're in a really crappy so, situation with that. Like we, yeah. we can't get health, we, if we get any treatment here locally, if we can even get it, like if we can get into the queue with all of the local people, um, then we're going to have to pay for that out of our own pocket. It'll be expensive. Yeah. We do have travel insurance for like major emergencies, like if we get in an, an accident and end up in hospital, um, they'll cover all that. But if you just, if we're getting ill and we need to like to, to go for checkups, for for something we just pay for out of our own pockets and usually the doctors are you know reasonably cheap yeah. in some countries i don't know um, what's going to happen if we have to, if we do have to go to the doctors here um supplies are really limited our airbnb landlord just gave us a couple of paper masks yeah we should put them on for a thumbnail <laughs> all right that that'd be the thumbnail um, um yeah, so we, we do have travel insurance for the major things like that to cover us for big expenses. And if we need to get, you know, sent home, if we could break our leg or something. You'll get sent home. I haven't got travel insurance. Well, you need to get travel insurance. Yeah, I do. I just don't want to get it right now because they're not paying for anything. And usually when we get sick, yes, we do cross our fingers and hopefully hope that we get better and go see a doctor if it gets, if we really need to and just pay for it out of our own pocket. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what else have we got? Um, sorry. Are you worried about being here in, in Morocco right now? I'm the mood has changed, is not it, in the last few days? Yeah, it has a little bit. Um, I'm just worried about what the future is going to hold in the next, like, is this going to go on for months? Are we going to be literally stuck here for months? And is it going to get worse, like it is in Europe? And everyone's going to go, you know, crazy buying. We're not going to be able to get food. And if we do get sick, uh, how are they going to treat us at the hospital? Because we are foreigners. And they might, you know, they're going to treat their, you know, their people first. I know there's just a lot of what ifs. Okay, what yeah. else? Um, we've got a few van life questions. I oh, will come on to those in a separate video. 
Okay, well, that's it then. So the last thing I want to say to you guys about um, the coronavirus thing is that we're documenting everything as it happens. We've been to the supermarkets, we've documented the panic buying or uh, the situation in the supermarkets at least. Um, and all the situation with the decisions we're making and um, what we're doing right through to however this turns out and we will include it in our series. We will start our Morocco travel series. Um, I think we're just going to roll it next week. Um, this or week. This week? Yeah. Well, it's, it's coming. Um, so the next episode you see from us will be leading up to this um, pandemic. Yeah, so we've got about four or five episodes that we're going to be, that's going to come out um, from our experiences in Morocco before all this happened. So that's going to start this week when we first enter Morocco. Yeah. And for those of you on Patreon and the Combi Crew, um, we've got a new um, video coming up soon as well. Sweet. Thanks for your support, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey. Everybody, please stay safe. We're really thinking about you. Um, look after your old people. Don't go and get them sick. Isolate them. Wash your hands. You know, all that stuff. Just be safe, okay? We want you to stay subscribed. <laughs> Not die. <laughs> Peace out.